What is up all you beautiful people, it is I, Akemi TCG, back here with a brand new video. I had a commentator ask me, can we make a budget Rika Fairy deck like less than 50 bucks because I know my current build, it's pretty expensive, not gonna lie. But 50 bucks? I tried making it and it's actually not bad. With some tweaking, it could get a lot better. But before I go into this video, I just want to make an announcement. We recently hit the 1800 subs. I want to thank you, every single one of you, for subscribing, for supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form. So I decided to start up a Patreon, and this Patreon is going to have multiple tiers, just like other Patreons. For the lower tiers, you can just support the channel. For the higher tiers, I'm going to be including an extra, extra, extra video every single week, exclusive for Patreon members, you know, on the second tier or higher. So if that does interest you and you want more from this channel, or if you just want to help me out, then feel free to support me down below. Let's get to it. All right, everyone, we are back here in the den with this budget build. I'm just going to show you guys straight up what build I'm using. Um, there's going to be some changes to it, just depending on how the replays go, and I'll be making the changes proactively well not proactively but whatever the other word is so after i finish making all these replays or going through all these replays i'm going to go back into this build and change a couple cards into it again this is not perfect this is something i whipped up uh pretty darn fast it's definitely less than 50 bucks okay 100 percent. i'm certain it's less than 50 bucks probably the most expensive thing has to be the teardrop and i'm only supposed to be playing one ding gear suit i don't know why there's two in there so let's get right into it let's see how we do Boom, boom, boom. Got these replays on deck. Again, with these replays, doesn't matter if I win or lose. I'm just going to show it off regardless. Oh boy, his hand is loaded. His hand is loaded. This is the most loaded hand I've seen. Oh, you open block dragon? What a god. So I have to be Rika Glamour. This is kind of what I need uh, to resolve in this case because my hand's kind of garbo in terms of what I have. So I really desperately need pedal. It doesn't even have to resolve. Like, if I have pedal and get it in the graveyard, then I can kind of go off ish. But he has ash, so yeah, clearly he's gonna ash that. Wow, he draws into science too. He had to fit seeker. I just ghost ogre him because even if he gets a monster here, he can't pop up unless he has researcher in hand. So I was just kind of bank on him not having researcher in hand. And this guy gets super unlucky, and he doesn't hit anything that is of use, so literally nothing happens. He activates Foolish, and then he gets Analyzer in the graveyard, then he's going to activate Signs and get Analyzer onto the field. Since he's, since he's banky on Analyzer resolving, plus like since he activated Signs, he gets to return, or uh, he gets to put a level 4 lower rock monster from his deck and put it at the top and since I knew he has drag guy at the top this is going to resolve so I have to solemn strike it I mean in in retrospect I could have waited uh, for the needle fiber too yeah I could have technically waited for the needle fiber but I just didn't want him to have a third rock in the graveyard just in case he had block dragon in hand which she did so I did this pretty much a goose. I mean, he could have reborn one of these guys, but like he's already activated uh, both of their effects this turn, so he can't. This is negate the activation. I don't know, he gets the activation, so he can activate it. If I negate the activation, I think he should be able to do that again. Oh, this says use each effect. Okay, I don't think he can do that again. So, anyways, I draw, I break, I draw into Erica. And he's got a monster you born a seeker. And I know he has a normal summon regard in hand, so here's like where I'm gonna get a little bit finicky here. He bricks again with the seeker. I don't even know what kind of build he's playing that's causing that to happen. So he summons Native Fiber. I really can't do anything about that. He gets researcher off of that. I have no idea why he gets researcher. Like, does he have another target? Oh, he's not playing O-Line or Jitsen Grunt. So this is like kind of like a... It's kind of like a Walmart build of Ad Emancipated. But anyways, let's keep going. So that was Nightmare Phoenix to get rid of his Block Dragon in hand. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's in its hand or is in the graveyard. Because it does the same thing either way. 
So it goes into Block Dragon. Goes into Nightmare Unicorn. Helps the three back. I thought he was just gonna... Oh wait, he needed to dump the Block Dragon. I thought he was gonna attack with both Unicorn and Block Dragon before he goes into Unicorn, but... Oh, whatever. I'm, I'm not playing the deck, so... You know, if he's giving me more opportunities to potentially get him, then I'll take it. So I draw into Lone Fire, and this is the saving grace, okay? This helps a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. So I'm not used to not playing Evil Thorn in this build. So I just gotta figure out what I can do here. So I get Mudon, and the best thing I can do is summon Snowdrop Mudon and go into... Oh, what is it called? Oh, Sheet. And that's Teardrop is the best thing I can do against this deck because all of his effects are um, not ignition effects, but they're OPT, like once per turn, so I can use Rika Sheet to my advantage here. Attacking for 3000, set one card and pass. There's really not much I can do here, honestly. But it's okay, I mean, we're, we're playing against meta, you know what I mean? I know it's gonna be tricky. So he summons Analyzer, I have to negate that, that's one. That's one uh, out of the way, but these two, I have to kind of bank on one of these missing in order for me to kind of pop off but he also drew into gigantes too so he was good for like days so on the last card he gets alexandra i thought he whipped again that would have been amazing but i just can't do anything here he alexandra shifts into garnet so he summons borlo savage and then he yeah, forces my hand because i have to negate the borlo savage okay with the teardrop this because, let's say hypothetically he attacks into my teardrop, right? I can drop Erica, but he can just negate the Erica. So, at the time of him summoning Borlo Savage and activating uh, the effect to equip a monster, I have to negate it with teardrop. Like, he's literally forcing my hand. And he didn't play Researcher yet, or he didn't activate Researcher yet, so I'm kind of screwed, like spaghetti style there. So I just have to hope he whips on Researcher. I really just have to hope he whips, and then he has Doki Doki. And Drakite, too. So pretty much here he just goes off because I I don't have anything left. And if he doesn't win this turn, I would be royally, royally confused. He goes into Leonite and he gets a signs off of that too. I've actually never seen anybody play Leonite in Emancipator build. I usually see like an Aurora Dawn build with O Lion, but uh, let's see what else. He goes into Gite turn. Bounces stuff back to my hand, and then he can keep going if he wants to. But he really can. He still has these two, so I just have to give it to him there. If if I resolve the Ash Blossom or the Glamour Turn One, I might have been able to get out of that situation. Play game. I play against. Um, oh boy, this. Oh, like this hand's pretty bad too. Salvage, Snowdrop, Riga Flurry, Ghost Ogre, and Solemn Strike. Obviously I'm playing Ghost Ogre because it's like a budget Ash, but it does come in handy. He sets a Somatic Cylinder and Sacred Beast Awakening, so he's playing budget too. We're we're both uh, budget boys here. I normally summon Sickleman, activate Flurries, and just poke. So I really wish Sickleman was at least a quick effect, but it's not. Activates opening the Spirit Gates, can't do anything about that. Activates MST, and I'm, I was praying. If he MST'd my Solemn Strike, I would be in big trouble, but he MST'd the Flurries. Maybe he's worried about uh, me having some sort of interaction with Flurries, which is plausible because people just don't know really know what this deck does. Summons Dark Beckoning Beast. Obviously, I saw him strike that. I don't want him to add uh, stuff from the deck to his hand. And also, I don't want him to summon a Fiend Monster um, with zero attack and defense also as well. So I don't want him to summon <laughs> Chaos Summoning Beast off of that, you know what I mean? So I have to negate the summon, get that to the Grazer. And he's just gonna end his turn. So on my turn, I draw into Mudon. So what else? So Snowdrop, Mudon. Get Rika Sheet, because I know, because I know, I can. If I could steal one of his monsters, it's gonna be a blowout. Okay. So let's go into Teardrop. I really wish All Say was still cheap, but it's not. He magic cylinders me, and I'm like, wait, what year are we in? And you know, well played, well played. Okay. Sickleman comes back from the graveyard because I tributed it this turn. That's the beauty of that card where it has really good synergy with you know Sheet and Tranquility and also Glamour too, depending on how you use that card. He activates Legacy the Duelist. I have not seen this card played in a long time. So basically, when your opponent attacks, you get target, a spell trap card, your opponent controls, negate the attack, and if you do, destroy that card. 
So he can poke with one of his cards, negate his own attack, then destroy a spell or trap card uh, that your opponent controls. And that's not, I believe that's not once per turn. And also, each player can only set one spell or trap card from the hand once per turn. So if you're playing a trap heavy deck like Altergeist, this card kills that deck. And also, monsters cannot attack the turn they're summoned from the extra deck. So I have to play around that. And also, during his draw phase, before he draws, he can give up his normal draw and then add a monster from the graveyard to his hand. So it's actually, it's like a mid-duel card. That's like the best way I can put it, because mid-duel setup, uh, it's, it's interesting to say the least. So he summons Chaos Summoning Beast, and he says it says you contribute this card, special summon uh, one of these cards from your hand, and I don't want to risk him having anything from his hand, so I just activate Rika Sheet, so he can't even activate it in the first place. And I also take the card too, because the reason why I take this card is I don't want it to potentially go to the graveyard for maybe a Link Summon. I have no idea what it does in um, terms of what he has in his deck for Link Summons. And it says he can banish the card from the graveyard, add a Fallen Paradise from your deck to your hand. So I don't want him to get that card in his graveyard anyway, so that's why I took it. So he's going to activate Regeki, nuke my board. I haven't seen Regeki played in a while. He's been clearly watching my YouTube videos. <laughs> Jokes aside, I finally drawn to my petal. I'm going to add my Erica to the hand. Activate Salvage, okay? Salvage is going to get me back both Snowdrop and Mudon. So it's a decent tech card. It's just not good early game. That's honestly the best way I can put it. So I cut it down to one after the fact, but it's a pretty good budget alternative uh, for this deck in terms of draw power. I mean, hypothetically, you could play, you know, Extravagance or Desires, just depending on your ratios, but uh, Salvage is good, <laughs> in my opinion. So it actually draws into Haman. So he activates opening the Spirit Gates, and I was literally holding on to the Ghost Ogre until he activated that. Because he's just going to straight up negate it. He's going to neg one, and I'm just going to Ghost Ogre and negate it. It draws into Haman. He really can't do much here. Petal's going to come back, and I pretty much have this in the bag. So Petal's gonna grab me Moonon. I don't really need to go into a second teardrop because there's no reason to. I just add another sheet and then just take my time with it. I mean there's no really no rush, especially with this budget build. And I set my copy of Salt and Thread because they always set one. I can't set both of these. The sheet just for proactively in the future. Uh, he summons Chaos Summoning Beast. I'm just gonna get rid of it before I can use the effects and then he surrenders. So if you enjoyed this video so far, please leave a like. A comment down below. Oh boy, he. Oh boy. I'm making some weird noises here because I'm playing against Chaos. Whew. Whew. Alright, so. I don't have any interaction right now. So I'm just gonna skip to the end of the combo, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm back, I'm back. Wait, that's it? Is this a Boral Sword and a Boral End? Okay, Boral End has one negation. In terms of like, he has a target, an effect monster in the field, a rocket monster in the graveyard. Negate the effects of that monster in the field, and if you do special summon that monster in the graveyard, frankly, I don't have anything on the field. Uh, Drew into both flurries, which really is pretty garble. If I had a monster, then I could force him to get rid of one of these, which is which would have been great, by the way. But I don't. Or do I? I do. But it's not a Rika monster, so I can't use Glamour immediately. So I have to play Glamour. And like, I have spaghetti here and I choose to get Sickleman because I thought you can just straight up tribute it, but I forgot you need plant monsters on the field, so... In retrospect, in hindsight, I should have grabbed Petal. I could have just set the Petal, uh, set the sheet, and then activated Flurries. And that's what I could have done. Also during standby phase, I could have also... Wait, no, that wouldn't make sense, because if, during standby phase, I activate a solemn, wait, no, Rika Sheet to get rid of my card, then he could chain Boro End Dragon, target his Boro Sword Dragon, and then special summon something else, because this would both activate on resolution, so he would just get rid of the card he tributed, so this, that wouldn't be the most optimal play for me unless I grabbed... Grab, grab. Yeah, I actually have no idea how I could have played this properly because the Solemn Strike is good in theory, but both of these cards, their effects can't be 
strike except for Borosaur's attack effect. So it activates Boral and Dragon here, and like, at this point in time it's a little bit too late for me to activate Sheet because he can just protect from one of these guys. I mean he can just tribute one of these guys and that doesn't do me any good. I just really want to get either one of those out. What I also could have done is, um, no it's on a face-up monster, never mind. So Flurries will activate after I grab his Boral and Dragon, and that's honestly not too optimal. Sycamon does come back, which is nice, but I would have preferred it to be a Petal, but Petal... If I grab Petal too, he could have also done the same thing. Literally every turn he could summon a Rocket Monster from his graveyard. That's why Boar Ends is really good, and I can't strike it. So I draw into Salvage, and I really can't do much here. So it activates Gold, I mean Boros Sword's effect to gain the attack, and then I go over him. That's the that's the big brain, alright guys? And I still draw into like nothing. This is like an abomination. If I drew into um or not not Sickleman, but if I had Petal instead, that might have been a different outcome to be really honest. But it's activating Tracer, I gotta strike that because I I really, really have to get rid of it on the field. Oh, he drew into Imperm too, so... Darn, that blows. Then I could activate a second uh, Flurries, I don't know. So I was gonna activate Sheet on his monster, because I don't want him to do sh some shenanigans with um, Boral N. Basically, the Sheet's gonna allow me to make plays on my turn. Lone Fire will save me if it goes through. By summon Lone Fire and he ashes it. He could have also impermed it too. So he had two ways to get out of Lone Fire, so that that means I just lose there. That's a GG. Bam. Next one. I'm playing against choo choo choo. I think I'm playing against um, some zombie Mayakashi hybrid. So Mayakashi's how they work is you basically summon Hyjun. Get Docky into the graveyard and literally climb up with Dragoonides, except Docky always comes back. It's like Dragoonides but zombie style, if that makes sense to uh, any of you. So it goes up into Yoko, goes off into Dashidakuro. Activates one from what he has a nutty hand, okay? One from one into Mizuki is broken. So Mizuki is gonna get back Hajun and Yuki Ona. I think Hajun is not once to return. Oh no it is, it is, it is, okay. So he summons Yuki Ono out of all these cards. I thought he would have just left the field to be honest. But I don't, I have no idea why he summoned Yuki Ono. And then he has a King of Skull Servants back for 4k attack. I summon back from Rika Petal and for whatever reason he chooses not to activate Yuki Ono's effect. So I, okay, that means I can use Petal on my turn. But even then, I already had a pedal in hand, so there's no way he could have negated that unless that back row is a, um, is a, does it, no it doesn't destroy it, unless that back row is like an imperm or something. So what I would have done is I would have normal summon pedal if he played this properly. Normal summon pedal and then grab Mudon. Out of a pedal's effect, get Mudon anyways. So here I did not normal summon yet. So he's gonna banish pedal, it says until the end of the next turn. So even at the end phase of the next turn, even if I have a pedal on the field, I can't do anything. So all I do is just summon Teardrop and just uh, tribute his Yuki Ona and attack over his Daki. Oh wait, no. I go into the Lone Fire Jazz with the, the normal summon. So we get the Spice with Talea. Plant monsters on the field can't be destroyed by card effects. I don't know if it's relevant for his deck, but I'm just gonna set Ricochet and pass there. He draws the Hajun, which is like the best top deck. He summoned Daki, and I didn't realize that he can just synchro these two together. But once he summons Oboro, I have to get rid of his monster with Teardrop. But he has another White Prince, so he can summon it back. So I activate Rikashik, getting rid of my Teardrop to take his monster. The reason why I get rid of the Teardrop is because this has a continuous effect, and then the other card does not, and this has like some sort of protection. Because my plant monsters on the field can't be destroyed by card effect. Uh, other plant monsters, rather. So he attacks, he bumps heads, I drop Erica, 
and then he, I, I don't know what's going on, but pretty much I have GG here. That is GG's. Then the final game of Destiny. Oh, I could have played, um, well, oh, that could have been an idea too, but I don't think that would have been a good idea. So, I, I had one commentator tell me to play Moray of Greed, you know, shuffle water monsters, then draw three cards. So essentially you break even except you're drawing to a third card. But in this case, let's say if I play Moray of Greed, okay? I, oh, it doesn't even tell me what I would have drawn. Interesting. Okay. I think it doesn't tell me because I didn't play any search cards yet or something, I don't know. Because I honestly thought this was salvage in my hand the whole time. I don't know what's going on. I was just really tired. So I'm playing in salad. He goes into bailings. I have to get rid of his card. To be quite honest, I'm not too well versed with the salad matchup. So it's definitely an interesting matchup. Still learning as we speak. And Mirage Thalio. He summons Mirage Thalio because I completely forgot the lobby I made was any format. So he's playing OCG cards. I think they sell Mirage Thalio. And... It was at this point here that I'm like, yep, that, there's no way I can win. Because he's going to get the rage set up and everything. And uh, with Rika's against Salads, like that's. It's just, it's just extremely hard. It's not easy. Because he's going to activate Roar to negate and destroy it. Oh, this is, it says you can only use each effect, so even if the activation is negated, then Rika Pedal can't resolve again. That's the reason why I summoned that one. And there we go, I get clapped there, guys. Really not much I could do here. Yeah. I have Mudon to the hand, summon Mudon, and then he's gonna, he's gonna do the thing. Okay, he's so gonna just use Rage to pop it, okay. Okay. And a Harpy's Feather Duster, and I'm like, yep, that, yes, that card is, that card is very good. It's a good card. Anyways, let's go back into the deck and try to, like, tutor it up. Uh, let's see, one more. Like, I didn't draw into Compulse at all, so I don't know how well it would have performed. I could play Torrentials, which isn't a bad idea. Right, let's try... Because Torrentials have synergy with, with Salvage. And also Petal always comes back anyways. Alright, I'm gonna try... Torrential here. So the next video, we're gonna, we're gonna keep building on this. I know all of you, um, or a lot of you, you know, this game is expensive, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. And I do want to help you all out with a budget build of this deck. Obviously, it's not as competitive as the main build, but it's definitely very playable. Anyways, if you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more future updates. I'm Akami TCG, I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright, bye guys. The world ends now. <laughs>